Now, what I'd like to point out is that all these current techniques that I talked about, for example, I, I also talked about rate transient analysis. Uh, if, I, if I have to go back, the rate transient of these techniques are, all of them are proxy modeling, but each of them uh, is proxy modeling to a degree. The fact is that physics of flow physics of uh, propagation of fract uh, induced fracture and produced water, especially in flow back in, in Marcellus. Uh, these are very vaguely understood in our, in our uh, industry. And also another fact is that all these modeling that I talked about uh, in, in last slide, uh, they're all forward modeling. In other words, uh, they're rarely used as, uh, to solve inverse problems. And in the rare occasion that, are, that they are used uh, in the, as in uh, as inverse problems uh, in order to perform uh, design, uh, the results that they provide are soft data. Uh, what I call soft data is uh, you can only put in it. Uh, in, if in forward modeling you put uh, stimulated reservoir volume, then inverse model only can provide you with the uh, design of a uh, stimulated reservoir volume. And if you put in frac half length, frac height, frac width, and frac conductivity, uh, these are soft data. Therefore, even if you do inverse problem solving, uh, this, uh, these characteristics, these soft data, is, is what you get, which, which from a design point of view, if you ask any completion engineer, they will tell you they're really useless. You cannot use them in order to design frac jobs. Everybody likes to have uh, long fracture half length and width and height and, and conductivity, but but the key is uh, uh, it's, it's not really easy to, uh, to accomplish them, especially when your point of departure and start is not what you put into the system in terms of the actual measurements that uh, are done in the, in the field, such as I will talk about what's what I call hard data. And uh, one last thing is overwhelmingly most of these uh, analyses are, are single well models, uh, and hardly you ever find simulation models that are uh, for full field or even multiple paths. Uh, what data-driven analytics, advanced data-driven analytics provide is uh, really proxy modeling at its best. It is proxy modeling because we do not explicitly uh, model any physics into this process. But the difference is uh, unlike numerical simulation mo and modeling and analytical simula uh, analytical modeling, uh, we, during uh, data-driven analytics, uh, there is no assumption that is made uh, about our state of understanding of the physics of the problem. In other words, we do not pretend that we know what's going on, and we, uh, we start by the assumption that we don't know really what the, <coughs> what the physics are. And our objective is to understand it as much as possible rather than start with the physics and, and move forward. <coughs> so, but at the same time, uh, I have to mention that we make one major assumption in data-driven analytics. And uh, if you can stomach that, this, this one assumption, then, then you should be fine uh, performing these anal analysis and move forward, move forward with it. And that assumption is the following. We assume that data that is generated and collected in the, in the field carries the information about geology and physics of the system we're trying to model. And to me, that's a very uh, reasonable assumption to make. And that's, isn't that why we collect data to begin with? So uh, advanced data-driven analytics, uh, data-driven solutions, are the only solution today that they can actually provide full field modeling of a shale asset. Actually, the larger the number of wells that you have, the better are your chances of, of performing successful analysis and building full field models. They are full field multi-well and uh, multi-pad modeling. And most important of all, they use hard data and not soft data. I mentioned what soft data is, and I'm going to talk about what hard data is. Uh, they, it, this technology offers a comprehensive workflow for analysis, modeling, forecasting, and design optimization of uh, reservoir and production management of shale asset, as, as you will see throughout this uh, presentation. So because we use hard data to perform our modeling, this type of modeling is coined 
fact-based analysis and modeling. Uh, I, I should mention that I have borrowed this terminology from Google on the work that they do with extensive work that they do in different, not, not in petroleum engineering, but in other areas in data-driven analytics and predictive analytics. Uh, they call that fact, they, they do fact-based modeling, and I think it's uh, very well put. Uh, fact-based modeling is what we're doing. It relies on hard data from a large number of wells uh, that have the potential to contain trends and patterns rather than, uh, albeit uh, not so obvious uh, at, the, at the beginning and sometimes quite hidden. So the key is they use, they use uh, a large number of wells to come up with this rather than anecdotal evidences of one or a few examples. Of all, you always hear people saying that, that yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I have a cousin that drilled a well somewhere and uh, a shale and they, they fracked it and so and so was observed. Uh, these are anecdotal evidences, one here, one there, you hear it, you see it. Uh, that is not of interest to fact-based modeling. Uh, what we're looking for is result that comes from a large number of wells uh, and data, and we're looking for patterns. So what we call hard data, they are things that we actually measure in the field. Fluid type, fluid amount, propen type, propen amount, ISIP, breakdown pressure, uh, injection pressure, injection rate, anything that can be measured is used as uh, data that goes into the system. From uh, well, where how it's drilled, inclination, azimuth, length, total, uh, through vertical depth, uh, to reservoir characteristics such as uh, gamma ray, density, resistivity, prosody, TOC, uh, to uh, completion information such as uh, the length of the lateral, the distance between stages, number of stages, number of clusters, number of perforation. All of these actual facts are what we call hard data. Soft data, on the other hand, refers to things that are interpreted, estimated, or even guessed. Things such as fracture length, height, width, conductivity, or stimulated reservoir volume, things that people do not uh, usually measure. Uh, current conventional modeling technologies use soft data. I think we established that. So the case studies that I'm going to talk about here, uh, uh, they're all from uh, Marcellus Shale, and from multiple assets uh, they are, and uh, uh, it represents about more than 400 wells, or 4,800 stages, or 14,000 clusters of hydraulic fracturing. And the data includes things such as well location, well trajectory, uh, reservoir characteristics, completion characteristics, hydraulic fracturing characteristics, operational constraint, and production data, pretty much anything that we collect.